J hat to juk. Please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEXT scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 College of Technology Mathematics Questionnaire. The answer key and the original questions are linked in the description. For this problem, we need to find the values of x that satisfy this equation. In this problem, the degree is 3, that is, the maximum exponent is 3. That means that the maximum number of x's that satisfy this equation is 3. That means we can have three different values of x. We can have 0, 1, 2, or 3 solutions. For this given equation, there doesn't seem to be an obvious solution to me. So I will go and start guessing. Here I show the case for when my guess was x equals negative 1. So what we're going to show is that negative 1 satisfies this equation. That is, if I plug in negative 1 into the x's here, I should get an equality that is 0 on this side and 0 on this side. And if that is the case, then I can say that x equals negative 1 is a solution. So that's what I do here. And indeed, we see that on this side we get 0, on the other side it's also 0, and therefore this is a solution. Because x equals negative 1 is a solution, that means that x plus 1 is a factor. And if x plus 1 is a factor, then we can divide this given polynomial by x plus 1, and the quotient should be another factor. Of this polynomial. So that's what we did here. So we used synthetic division. So we just put the 1, the negative 3, and negative 2. Here we have a 0 term for the x squared because the x squared term here is missing. So the coefficient is 0. And here we have negative 1 on the divisor. Then we just do the usual synthetic division. We bring this down, we multiply, then we add, multiply, then add, multiply, then add. And here we have the coefficients of the quotient. And because we started with x cubed, the leading term in the quotient must be x squared. And that's why we have x squared minus x minus 2. And the 0 here is the remainder, which means that this is indeed a factor of the given cubic polynomial. Here we just write again what we learned. We learned that this given equation here, in this given equation, this polynomial can also be expressed as the product of x plus 1 and this quadratic polynomial here. So this x plus 1 gives us a solution of x equals negative 1. So that is just equating this with 0. The other solutions will come from this factor. That is, we equate this with 0. And that's what we did here. And now we just need to solve this. And in this problem, we show two ways of solving this. We use the quadratic formula, and the other way is just plain factoring. And the factors that we get from this, or the solutions that we get from, from this equation, will also be solutions to the original cubic equation. Here we first show the factoring method. So we solve this by factoring. For some of you, the factors may be obvious, and that's and those are x minus 2 and x plus 1. For those of you who, who cannot see these factors immediately, one of the things you can do is try guessing. So guess a solution. In this case, I'm showing a guess of x equals neg or rather x equals 2. So I try to plug in 2 in the equation, and if it satisfies the equation, then x equals 2 is a solution, and therefore x minus 2 must be a factor. So let's try to plug in 2. So we put 2 here, we get 4, we put 2 here, we get minus 2, and here we get minus 2. Indeed, we get 0 equals 0. That means that x equals 2 is a solution, and therefore x minus 2 is a factor. And we just underline it here to show that this is indeed one of our answers. 
And then the remaining factor can be obtained by dividing this quadratic polynomial by the factor that we just found, which is x minus 2. So here I show synthetic division. So again, that's just the coefficients of the dividend, which is 1 minus 1 minus 2. So 1 minus 1 minus 2. And this term here, the constant term, which is just 2 in here. And the regular synthetic division is just bringing this down, multiplying, then adding, multiplying, then adding. And here we have the coefficients of our quotient. So we notice that we have a zero remainder, which means that indeed we have a factor here. And now we just have to find the leading term. So we start with an x squared. And so the leading term here would have to be an x. So we just decrease the exponent by one. So that's x. And this one is the constant term. So that's one. However, we recall that x plus 1 has already been accounted for as a factor in the previous step. That was the first solution that we found that was x equals negative 1. And so that means that the given cubic polynomial can be factored into 2x plus 1s and 1x minus 2. And so the solution x equals minus 1 appears twice. And so the answer for this problem will only be 2. There will only be two answers. That's x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. And again, negative 1 appears twice. Finally, we show how to use the quadratic formula to find the roots of this quadratic factor. So we just, we just list down the values of a, b, and c. So a here is the coefficient of this term, b for this coefficient here, and c for the constant term. And then we just recall this quadratic formula and we substitute the values that we have. And simplifying that, we get this and this. And that means that we have the possible values of x as 1 plus 3 over 2, which is just 2, and 1 minus 3 over 2, which is just negative 1. And again, that means that the original cubic equation can actually be expressed in terms of the factors x plus 1 squared times x minus 2. The x plus, the x minus 2 comes from this, the x plus 1 comes from this, and the other x plus 1 comes from the first step. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya! Please hit subscribe.